Hi everyone, Pear from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to another still water fly fishing tutorial. In our previous still water videos we looked at the gear needed, the flies used and some of the basic techniques to successfully target trout in still waters. Today I thought we have to chat about something else and that is how to target another very prolific species in still waters, how to target bass. I know there are several different species of bass like largemouth, smallmouth and spotted bass but for the purpose of this video we will be treating them all the same as I feel that some of these basic techniques will work good for all of them. One of the most important factors of any style of fishing is finding the fish and this is also super important while targeting bass. You'll hear many anglers say that bass love structure and that is really true but my question is what kind of structure do they like? And during which part of the seasons do they like what kind of structure? Now we're starting to ask the right questions as we're diving into fish behavior rather than following a rule of thumb. During early spring water temperatures start increasing and bass migrate into shallower water where they start preparing themselves for the spawning season. Big females and feisty males congregate around structure where they hold during the entire season. Here, they're usually very territorial and very aggressive. Structure types to look out for is fallen trees, submerged weed beds, submerged logs or even overhanging branches. Work these kind of areas and you'll definitely find fish. The reason why I love fishing for bass during this part of the season is that it's usually your best bet to get your sight fishing game on. If you're not finding the bass around their normal shallow structure, now this is where you need to go and look for submerged really deep structure. Finding this might be really hard if you don't know a piece of water, but what you're looking for is steep drop-offs, really deep submerged weed beds or trees. Now that we know where to find the bass, we need the right rig to target them successfully. The line weight rating that you'll be choosing will be determined by the following three factors the size of fish that you'll be targeting, the size of the flies or the wind resistance of the flies that you'll be throwing at them and how hard the wind is blowing on that stretch of water. In most cases dams will have fish up to about four pounds in size. Here a good six weight will definitely get the job done unless you're really going to be throwing very large flies like big game changers, big sex dungeons or big poppers. If there's a good chance that you'll be hooking into an 8 pounder or more, if the water is known for those caliber of fish, I would recommend going for an 8 weight rod. And remember, always match your line weight and your reel to your rod's line weight rate. When the fish are holding really deep, it might be a good idea to have a sinking line at hand. Depending on the exact depth that you'll be fishing, you can either fish a DR3, which sinks around 3 inches per second, up to a DR5 or even a DR7 which sinks at around 7 inches per second. For the leader, I must be honest, I don't use anything fancy. Yes, you can use a very nice tapered leader or a floral carbon tapered leader. It will definitely help you to present those bigger flies much easier. But in my opinion, I just use a straight monofilament leader of about 8 to 10 pounds in breaking strain, the same length as the rod. If the fish are super sized, I'll probably go up in my leader size, so probably fishing 15 pound. And if the fishing is super slow or the fish are weary, I'd go lighter. A massive can of worms to open is which bass patterns to use. There are literally thousands of patterns out there. And if we have to do full videos on them, we'd probably do like three full length videos. Here, I just want to cover the patterns that I use. They're basically just three fly patterns. The first fly that I usually tie on is a crease fly. And it's not because the crease fly is a much better pattern or it gets more eats, but when it does, it's usually damn impressive. The crease fly is also my favorite style of popper because you can get so many different styles of retrieves out of it. With short jerks, you can get a very erratic sort of pulsating movement, darts from side to side. And if you really plug on it very hard, you can get a decent plop out of it. When you're buying them, or even better, tying them yourself, make sure that the hook gap is well exposed. This will ensure much better hookup rates. The sex dungeon is one hell of a good fly pattern for freshwater predatory species. The sex dungeon pushes a lot of water, it has incredible movement, and it has two hooks, which is twice as good as one. It's no secret that I love the woolly bugger, and I really think it's one of the best bass patterns out there too. 
If I tie them specifically for bass, I adapt it slightly, giving them a longer tail and tying them on bass specific hooks. One of the most important and frequently overlooked aspects of best fly design is the hook that's used. You'll kick yourself if you use the inferior hook like I've done so many times. Things to look out for in a good bass hook is that it must be super sharp, it has a very wide gape, and it has a very light wire gauge, yet it's strong enough to hold decent fish. When you're tying your flies onto your leader or your extra piece of tippet that you've tied on, make sure to use a loop knot. This just gives your fly so much more movement and this usually just triggers that take. Some of the best loop knots are the Perfection Loop, the Union Knot and the Rapala Knot. Make sure to test these knots before you head out to the water and never use a new knot when you're not really confident in it. It's almost impossible for me to tell you exactly how to cast the fly, how to retrieve it back, how to set the hook and how to fight the fish without me standing right next to you. For that you need time on the water to gain you that confidence and knowledge. But I thought I might make a list of the things that I think can really improve your fishing success, especially while targeting bass. The first tip that I can give you, and this will help you catch a lot more fish, not only bass, is that on your final forward cast, when you're ready to deliver the fly, don't let go of the line with your non-casting hand. This will help you to regain control and tension as soon as your fly lands, because as soon as the fly lands, there's a good chance that the fish will already eat the fly. Now, if you first have to reach forward, get the fly line, hook it under your stripping arm or stripping hand, there's a good chance that you'll miss that take. The second tip slots in very well with the first tip, and that is once your fly lands, take up all the slack that was produced as it landed or during the casting stroke. This will also help you to detect any takes as soon as the fly drops down. My third tip is if you didn't get a strike within the first retrieve, it doesn't mean that the fish aren't there or they're not hungry or not eating. Refish that piece of structure three or four times and then only move on to your next piece of structure. The fourth tip is sometimes you'll see the bass following your fly but they're not really committing. Here we need to do something else with the fly to really initiate that take. One of the first things that I do is I strip the fly and as soon as the fish really comes after it, I stop. Bass usually move behind the fly and just sit there for a second or two and then you'll just see them open their mouths and suck that fly in and then you can set the hook. If that doesn't work and the fish doesn't respond to that, you can try and speed up the retrieve to see if you can really aggravate them. My fifth and last tip is to debob your hooks. It's better for the fish and it's better for you. I hope that you found this video helpful and that it gives you more success and joy when you're going out to catch bass. If you have any more comments or questions around this topic of catching bass, please leave them in the comment section down below. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications, then we can keep you in the loop of any future tutorials, reviews or vlogs that we release. Until next time, cheers.